Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today it's kind of a fun Friday here. We are going to be doing a pop-up card today. I did a pop-up card last week too. I guess I'm on a roll with the pop-ups, but I just was using the Arctic Bears bundle earlier in the week and I was talking about how we could take that bundle and turn it into a Christmas card. There are no Christmas greetings in that stamp set. It's a thinking of you and thank you stamp set, but I think it could also work really well as a Christmas card. And so I hope you will like today's card. It is kind of a fun card, also a little bit, you know, sedate too, because it's like polar bears. And I, when I think of polar bears there, I mean, they are carnivorous, but I, I, when I watch them walk on, on the ice, they are, uh, very serene and um, uh, so I, I kind of have a kind of respect for them the wildlife and all of that so um, I love how this card you know has that serene aspect to it but yet there's a pop of fun with the Santa hats and I think uh, this card that I'm making today I think I'll um, make them without the Santa hat so we can see how the two of them look and we can um, compare them side by side at the end and see if you know they look better with the Santa hats or without the Santa hats I couldn't decide last night so I put the Santa hats on because I thought I'm all for fun but then again if you want a more serious card you can leave them off and I think it will still look great good morning everyone I will talk to you afterwards so um, I if you're new to me um, and you have never watched a video of mine before I always have a project sheet for my Friday videos and the way to get that that project sheet is to be on my email list and if you look down below in the description of the video there should be a link there to subscribe to my email list and then on Saturdays I send out a project sheet it's going to look something like this I still have to go back in and edit it and tweak it and um, I'm thinking of um, I have a second page because the instructions it's not a hard card, but the instructions are long. I have to put the supply list on there and everything. So it kind of went over onto the second page. Um, but um, I think I'm going to put um, a diagram in there a little bit on how to make the pop-up element. It's not a hard element, but when you look at it, you might think, how does that all work? And so I, um, I the video, of course, will be uh, a link on the project sheet as well so you can refer back to it definitely and I think it will help if you see me do the pop-up element once and then if you have the diagram to refer back to so I will update that and get it sent out on Saturday and I really think you're gonna like this card it's kind of a fun card so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna switch over to my other camera and we'll get started on making the card all right, I guess I should show it to you first. That's always a, a, a fun thing. So on the front of a card, I kind of kept it simple. I t tend to keep my pop-up cards a little bit simple on the front because normally you're gonna display this card open. Pop-up cards are better displayed open. So um, you will, you know, have this kind of, it's, it's fun because it is, it looks like a polar bear on an iceberg. Okay, and that same iceberg is going to move into the inside of the card and it's on this pop-up element and um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's an angled pop-up element. So it's not just like a regular box, like it's not just hovering like that, which it could have been as well, but it actually um, slopes down and angles down and so it really becomes part of the card. And we're using a lot of the elements from the Arctic Bears bundle, like the icicles and the little sun right here. Um, and the layering diorama dies are what create these uh, iceberg pieces that um, for the little polar bears. And I love, you know, from the outside, you know, Merry Christmas. And then on the inside, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. 
And you know what? I think this would work really well. Let's say you have like a family member that's uh, expecting a baby um, this year or they just had a baby this year. I think this would be a really sweet card for that. Um, what if they're, uh, the person uh, had twins? Well, cut out two of these little uh, polar bears down here at the bottom, put two of them on the little iceberg. Um, and so you can just play around with that and I think it will be really, um, fun but um, this window right here it kind of looks like an ice cave afterwards and it lets in a little bit of light so I love this card but you know me I love edibles and everything about it so there it is the the sweet little pop-up card we're gonna make today so let's talk about the products a little bit that we're using let me grab first We've got the uh, Arctic Bears Bundle, which you'll need if you want to make this card exactly. And remember to buy them as the bundle so you can save 10%. These are also available separately, but you'll want to get um, the dies and the stamp set so you've got these um, elements like the icicles, and then you can also cut out the bears really quickly and easily, um, and then just um, pop them up onto your card. Um, I used um, this element on a card earlier this week too, and then this iceberg, but I needed a, a, a more a rounder iceberg than just this kind of flat flattish iceberg so we I changed those out with the diorama dies and these look like I don't know I think there's seven of them seven amoebas <laughs> um, but they're really fun because um, you can create diam diorama cards with them and in my case it's kind of like a pop-up element diorama so it's kind of um, neat um, these are standalone dies out of the annual catalog definitely recommend getting them and then a couple stamp sets that I use that you could also sub out um, I because I just needed the little Santa hat from Banner Year. Banner year. And um, if you don't want the Santa hats, then you don't need the stamp set um, or find another stamp set that has a little Santa hat in it. Um, but I use Banner Year. And then I use the Christmas to Remember stamp set for the Merry Christmas and um, the um, inside greeting as well. Um, just a little tip in case I forget to tell you, I cut Merry and Christmas apart. They are actually on one stamp. There's enough space in between them to cut them apart because I needed an up down greeting rather than a side by side greeting. All right, I've done a lot of talking, but now we need to get the card done. So. Let's start off with talking about the card base. <clears throat> it is just a regular card base and I use pool party cardstock measuring eight and a half by, <clears throat> excuse me, eight and a half by five and a half and scored in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. I am not gonna fold it at this point. You just kind of need to have this um, card base ready. And I'm gonna do some die cutting now and then some, um, you know what, I'm trying to think, oh, if I should do the die cutting. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do some die cutting now and then some die cutting afterwards. It's nice to sometimes get all the die cutting done all at once on video so I don't have to lift up the machine twice, but I think in this case, um, it makes logical sense to kind of do it in two steps. All right, I've got my stamp and cut and emboss machine here. Um, we are going to need, um, base plate number one, thin die adapter number two, some extra pieces there. I've got um, my first one of my clear plates, number three, and then we're going to put the card base on here. I'm going to turn it like this so I can see it better for a moment. We're gonna use the fourth largest blob from the dia diorama die. And I'm going to place it on here. And you might notice on one of these sides, there's kind of this bump. That is what's going to be at the top. But the way you can figure out how to orient this is place it on the card, what will be the card front, choose one of the halves. And then um, you're gonna take the polar bear die and you're going to put it on the inside. 
This is just so you can kind of see, you need that polar bear to fit on there, um, facing forward and up, um, because it can't hang over this, this diorama piece. So it has to fit on there. So if the die fits on there, then you know that you have this oriented the correct way. For instance, if you have it like this, well, I guess it would work like this as well. Um, but then it's kind of shifted a little bit more to this side. It's, it's not quite centered. So look for the, on the long side, look for the side with a bigger bump. Okay, and that will be the one that goes to the top. Make sure your polar bear fits. And then what you're gonna just do is kind of center it from top to bottom, from this bump right here. And then just kind of scoot it from side to side. And just kind of make sure that it looks centered. I'm going to remove my polar bear now. So this bump really right here is facing north and then just kind of move this side to side, just kind of eyeball it, make sure it looks somewhat centered. It's not an exact science with a blob like this, so it's going to work, you know, um, just, just get it like that and then we're going to place our, oh, I think it shifted a bit. That's not good. All right, let me come back here. All right, we do not have a magnetic plate yet for this, so um, I just need to be really careful when I shift it. And also, when I'm turning it around, it's really hard um, to, it, it doesn't look quite right. Once it's turned around too, so that kind of makes you think, ah, it doesn't look right, but maybe it actually is still right. Okay. So I'm going to place this down carefully, and now we're going to run this through. I made that seem really complicated, but it's not really. You just need to cut a window out of the front. I'm very particular. So there, that is what it looks like, okay? And this piece I don't use for this card. You could maybe use it for another card. All right, let's put this away for now we will do the other die cutting afterwards after we've got all of our pop-up element in place and ready to go okay so we've got this piece and now we're going to build our pop-up platform so we'll have a little piece this is a little piece of basic white that measures three inches by one and a quarter it's hard to believe that that's going to support an iceberg, but it will. And when you see it, you'll realize it's an even smaller piece that supports the iceberg. Put that three inch side up at the top and you're going to score at the three and a quarter inch mark, the one and a half inch mark, and the two and a quarter inch mark. You know what? I just want to make sure I got this right. Three quarters of an inch. I sometimes I think say that wrong. Three quarters of an inch, one and a half, and two and a quarter. Okay, we're all on the same page. Okay, then one more piece that we need for the pop-up element is a little piece of one and a half by one and a quarter. That one and a half inch side, put it up at the top, and we're gonna score at the three quarters inch mark. I think I said it right this time, three quarters. I don't know why I always say that one wrong, but for some reason I can't see three quarters of an inch. All right, okay, so we're gonna build this pop-up element on the inside. I'm looking for my bone folder. Let's go ahead and fold the card along the score line and smooth that out. All right, and then we're going to fold these pieces along the score lines. And you can also make the fold lines a little better by using your bone folder and then fold this little guy. It's a little off kilter. Let me make them better. Okay, all right. So for this, we're going to look at this dip right up top here, and we're gonna put adhesive right here, and we're going to add that right here, right below the score line. Not on it, just 
a little tiny bit. So it's actually hugging that score line, but not on it. That's the best description. So just this one end segment, take Tombow, and I really recommend Tombow here um, because your other adhesives, I'm gonna clean my Tombow, it's getting a little clogged. I think I'm getting to the end of the bottle. So I'm just using a paper clip for that purpose. We'll put Tombow right here on the end. segment and then so just the one end segment not any of the others and we're going to line it up with this bump right here up at the top and then to get this so that it um, lines up perfectly you're going to fold this piece so it's in half okay and then we're also going to put Tombow just on this end segment. There's two segments here and just put Tombow right here. Okay. And then we're going to close the cart. Now this dip right here um, does, um, you'll see a little bit of this segment peeking out here. So I tried to keep the Tombow closer in into the center right there when I did it. So then I'm just gonna close this right here. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, I could have been a little bit closer to this end, but the iceberg should cover all of that anyway. But it's just so you're roughly in that vicinity so that it looks good when you uh, open it up. Okay, so you can see part of my score line right here. That's normal and that's fine, okay? All right, so it's got the little box pop up right there. And so if you stuck your iceberg, I don't know if I still, I have my pool party piece so you can kind of see how that would happen. So if you stuck it on here, uh, um, it would stick out like this and it would just float like a table on top. But we're gonna add another piece to here so now it will tilt instead of stay on the table like this. If you wanted a table element, then you would just put Tombow right here on this outer segment. Don't put any on that like inner piece because you'd want that to fold. Um, but since we're creating a slanted element, we'll take our little extra piece and we're gonna put Tombow on one of the sides and that side is going to match up with this top piece right here. And you're just gonna scoot it on top. So it's actually gonna match up perfectly. Okay, so just make sure the score line just hugs right along the other score line. Okay, and then this piece right here, you're gonna want it to stick out. That extra piece is going to stick out like that, okay? And then when we close the card, this is what we have. And when we put the iceberg on, when we adhere it, we're just gonna put Tombow on this end segment right here, not any of these other ones, just on this end segment. And that's what's going to put, the weight will be on there and it's going to create like a slant that looks like that. I don't know if you can, let me angle that right. So you can kind of see that it's kind of slanted and it will sit on on that little piece right there okay so that is really the bones of the card if you want to at this point since the card is nice and flat it might be a good idea to remember to stamp right now because if you have any greetings that are going to go right on the card let's just get them on there right now actually you could have done it right when you did the the diorama piece as well. So I told you earlier, I cut my Merry and Christmas apart. Don't worry, the stamping police won't come. They won't come and tell you you couldn't do that. So I'm just gonna kind of match this up right here. Put Christmas first, and then I'm gonna add my Merry kind of right in here. And um, the one thing I really do like about this particular stamp or the, the font on the stamp 
it's very scrolly and if you're a little bit crooked it's not going to show in fact even when it's straight it looks a little bit a little bit crooked so it's not going to make a, a, a big deal so I, I love that about this stamp okay so then on the inside we're going to stamp this other stamp um, may the may this christmas no may this be a christmas to remember and cherish i'm reading it backwards so it's i'm not good at doing that so i'll just stamp this down in the corner you want to get it into the corner because um of the icebergs and stuff so it just sits down there okay so we've got that stamping done on there and we can set this aside for the moment because we need to do some of the other pieces so let's grab a piece of basic white our memento ink pad and we're gonna ink up the polar bear because we're going to die cut him so let's get everything that needs to be stamped and die cut done okay and then this little guy we'll stamp him over here all right and now i think everything else doesn't need to be stamped first. So let's grab the die cutting machine again. And we're gonna do some serious die cutting. Starting with the polar bears. I'm gonna do these one at a time. I find it really hard to line up two things on a non-magnetic surface and cut them at the same time. So I think that looks pretty good. Stick that on there and run it through. So polar bear number one is done. And then we'll need the die for polar bear number two. Just kind of get it so you can see the edges of the polar bear all the way around the image. Place it down, roll that through. Okay, polar bear number two. Then we're going to create some icicles. right here we also need a sun and since these aren't coming around anything I'll do the sun and the icicles at the same time uh, the sun is cut out of sh this is shimmery white cardstock by the way I wanted to have a little bit of shimmer to these ones so um, it looks a slightly different color white than the polar bears, so that will also look nice. So there is the, the, the two of those, and we need another, a second one of the icicles. So let's just add that on here. And we'll roll it back through the other way, because you can do that. I just hardly ever do the reverse way. I like rolling one way versus the other way. Okay, so there is the second piece that I need. Look at, doesn't that look kind of cool? It looks like a graph or something. Okay, so now we're going to cut some more amoebas or whatever, whatever they are. So I'm using the same size, the fourth largest, and this is also out of shimmery white. I think I put shimmery white on my supply list. If not, it will be, oh, let me see. Yeah, I did, good. <laughs> Sometimes when there's more than one white, I, I forget. Um, I don't know if you can see that at all. The light is not 100% cooperating, but it's got shimmer to it. All right, so that is, that 
that size. And then I also want the second smallest one. This is the one that the small polar bear is going to sit on. I've got another piece of shimmery white and we'll just pop that on there and run it through. I wanted you to see all the pieces that you had to die cut when you were running it through so I could have done this ahead of time but sometimes you know if everything just kind of shows up on your place you don't know how everything is done so here is the little um, the smaller iceberg Okay, now we need to create a little frame for the outside. So I've got a piece of uh, Coastal Cabana cardstock here. And we're also going to use that third largest piece that we used to create the window, we used to create the iceberg. And now we're going to add the third largest. So one, two, then that's the third one, and then that's the fourth largest. So we're working with the third largest and the fourth largest diorama, layering dioramas dies. And what I'm aiming for here, I'm gonna die cut these both at the same time, just to kind of create a frame around here. So I'm just trying to get that inner piece to have about the same distance all the way around, um, all, of, all the way around. So I'm looking for this inner piece like the donut part and making sure it's kind of like that. It's not a perfect science with these diorama dies. So now I'm gonna run this through. And this is going to create a cute little frame for the front so it doesn't look so blah. All right, so you can put those dies aside. This is an extra piece you can use maybe another time. I don't know if you could use this, but it's going in the garbage too. And then this is our frame. Okay. And the frame for this, it kind of makes it look like maybe, sorry, that was loud. My platform fell off the end of my uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine as I was um, putting it down. Sorry for the noise. Um, so this kind of makes me think it's like a, you know, a wave around the iceberg. So um, we can, um, we'll attach that one afterwards because this is the part right here that I really want to show you how to attach. So this is the extra iceberg piece that we cut out of shimmery white cardstock. And so now just pay attention because this is, it's not the hard part, but if you put the Tombow on the wrong spot, then you're not gonna get the pop-up effect that you want. You won't get the slanted pop-up effect. So this end segment right here and only this end segment not this one but this one we want to put tombow on it okay just on that and that's what's going to hold our pop-up piece so now you're going to hopefully you can do puzzles you're going to puzzle this in make sure it's going in the right way if it doesn't fit, then you probably need to flip it um, to get to the right shape. Maybe it flipped on you. So I just kind of puzzle it in from the bottom. Okay. And you're just going to slide it and make sure it fits in that window. And then you're going to press down where that Tombow is. Slide it a little bit. You want to make sure it fits in that window nicely. press down and because this is shimmery it's a little slidey for a little while so you know you can just take your time make sure that it actually is in place and once we get the polar bear on there it will be there will be a little bit more weight and it will naturally um, push down when it opens okay so that is all there is to that that pop-up element and now it's just about the decorating so we can take this frame, and I don't know, it might have been easier to stick the frame on beforehand because you would have had more access to the window. So if you're making a bunch of these, you might want to decide that and make sure your frame is flipped the right way before you put Tombow on it. 
and I'm just going to add this around the window. Oh, I can still access the window right here, so it's fine. I just want to kind of feel with my fingers to make sure that the frame is seated nicely. You can kind of have a look on the inside too. Pull it out to the sides. So it just adds just a little bit. Looks like a, a wave around the iceberg or the dark edge of the iceberg. Okay. So now we're going to add the polar bear or polar bears. So we'll take the um, big polar bear and where did my dimensionals go? Here we go. We're going to add five dimensionals to support this bear and just make him pop off the page just a little bit more. Remove the backings. Okay, and then just anchor your polar bear on there. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but the two whites, the shimmery white from um, the iceberg and then the basic white of the polar bear they're two different colors so I like that they're two different shades of white that looks looks good all right so then we're going to come in here on the inside and take this iceberg and this little guy and decide kind of how we want him got some little pieces of lint that are on here that I want to, oops, remove. I'm too much of a nitpicky person. So we'll just kind of tuck that under the big polar bear, maybe about there like that. And I just scooted my little polar bear off my, there he is, off my work surface. He went for a little trip. Okay, so then I'm going to add this one with Tombow. You could also use a dimensional, but um, and I don't think it would interfere with this pop-up element too much, but this little guy, he's going to be a little flatter on my piece. Okay, and then on the outside, oh, we need to do a couple more things. We've got about the icicles and the little sun. Let's do the sun right now. So rather than having orange or yellow cardstock, I decided that I would do the Sun and Stampin' Blends, and that way I could use shimmery white cardstock. So I'm gonna use my pumpkin pie dark, and I'm just going to um, create a big orange blob. Then I'm going to come in with my uh, real red light and color the edges. I kind of want to create like a Christmas sun. So it's like orange and red kind of blended together. And then I'll come back in with my bullet tip on the um, pumpkin pie and I'm going to blend the line of the red with the rest of the pumpkin pie. So the sun is kind of, I don't know if that's a winter sun or what, but I wanted to bring in a little bit of red for Christmas. So um, that, I don't know if you can see it, is what it looks like. And it does have a bit of shimmer built in behind it because it is on shimmery white cardstock. All right. So then we're going to add the icicles to the front end. Stampin' Up! was kind of clever when they desi designed these um, dies because their two halves are what make up the full length of a card, or five and a half. So it, it almost works out perfectly to five and a half. So I'm just going to add this one right to the top. like that. And then you have to flip this one to get to the other side. Make 
make sure you put it on the right side and then just match those up like that and then we can add our little winter sun right here Okay, so that is kind of like a very serene card on the inside and I'm gonna leave it blank I'll show you um, the the little hats how I did them in just a second um, on the front of the card I just added a bow. This is some striped pool party um, Ribbon and this can be found in the holiday catalog and I'll just take some tear and tape I have found lately especially as it gets drier um, during the winter that mini glue dots don't have enough adhesive on them to hold uh, a big bow like this well. So I tied this bow earlier and I'm using a line of the Terran tape. It's a double-sided adhesive. And I'll just press that on the back of there and make sure it's kind of being grabbed by the ribbon. So now I have like this big long piece of adhesive so it's not just like one tiny little dot holding everything on there. So now the trick is to just get the adhesive to stay on the ribbon and not on the backing. Okay and then you can add that to the front of the card. And I think that just adds a little something. So it is a very monochromatic card on the front if you don't add the, um, the little Santa hats. So if you do want to add the Santa hats, let me grab a little piece of, I will just use regular basic white. And the Banner Year stamp set has this little tiny Santa hat right here. Tap, tap, tap. And just very gently stamp this. A small photopolymer stamp like this, if you smush it down too hard, it's going to lose the precision of its edges and lines. So you're just going to do like really light stamping. And then you're going to get two little hats if you want to add them on there. And then I would just cut them out. We don't have a die cut for it. And here are the little... Santa hats. They're very tiny when they're cut out. And then if you want to just add it with a dot of glue right on there and then add one to um, the little polar bear on the inside too. So I'm going to leave this card blank just so we can compare and contrast the two cards so you can see them side by side and see what you like better. Maybe you can tell me in the comments what you like better. Do you like the um, fun Santa hat one or do you like the one that's a little bit more serene and um, a little bit more realistic? Both of them are kind of fun, but uh, yeah. And those are the cards. And then these are the card fronts. So with this one right here, of course, there's no color on the front at all except for the um, blues. And this one, of course, you have just a little bit of the um, Santa hat there. So those are the cards. And look, it just it's really cool because this polar bear weights down this element. And you can see how it slants on there. And um, it kind of really brings a cohesive feeling to the whole card, like that. All right, I am coming back over to you guys to talk to you for a bit. Um, I also wanted to point out, if you've never been to my channel before, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. You'll see my little um, picture floating in the bottom. And um, if you click on me, um, that will take you to the subscribe link and you can subscribe to my channel. And I wanted to let you know I am really close to getting 
um, to 20,000 subscribers. I'm like less than 200 subscribers away to reaching 20,000. And not that anything really special happens when you reach 20,000. It's just that it's a cool number to reach, right? Um, all those like even big numbers. So I'm looking forward to that. I should hit that before the new year. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm lucky, if a few extra people subscribe, I might hit it by November, just based on um, how the channel is growing. So if you want to subscribe and help me reach 20K, please do that. That will be really cool once I, um, I reach that. And I'll let everyone know once I reach my uh, 20K um, subscribers. Thank you to all of you who are already subscribers. Um, and uh, I wanted to mention also all of the supplies I talked about today are available for purchase and um, you can find them uh, on my blog. There's a direct clickable picture links that you can use. You can also use add all to cart button and then you can go through and decide what you want and what you don't want. That I think is probably the easiest and fastest way um, to, you know, kind of sort through everything rather than having to click each one and add. Um, the ones that you want into your cart, just add all to cart and then go through and delete the ones that you don't need. Um, and then if you um, spend at least $15 in my store, I will send you a free tutorial. If you spend at least $50 this month, um, I will be um, sending you the Garden Gems. They are actually a new product that isn't even available for purchase right now, but it will be in November. November. And so that's when I send out my host code gifts. We are October 1st right now. So um, here is the host code. If you're here with me in October 2021, here's my new host code that I just posted today. I will have a photo up of the garden gems once they are in stock. They are a little bit behind in getting here. So I can't even purchase them yet. Um, we have a pre-order going for demonstrators. Um, so you can, um, normally you could pre-order them right now. The rest of the suite um, is available for pre-order right now, just not the gems. But I'm banking on the fact that the gems will be available on November 1st and I can scoop up all the ones that I need for the customers who order $50 or more from my store in the month of October. All right, let me just um, see if there's anything else I need to tell you. I think I have got everything. So let's go and talk to you guys and see where you're from. And uh, let me know if you have any questions because this is the best time to grab me when I'm live. And if you're watching this as a replay, um, please know that you can leave me a question in the comments and I will get back to you. Hi, Ellie from New York. Oh, and you have a sunny day too. You and I are not too, too far apart, so sometimes we have the same weather. So I we do have sunshine here today too. It's a glorious day. Good morning, Pam from Bogota, Colombia. Welcome. Good morning, Melba from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Awesome. Um, Ellie says she loves the movement of the car. Thank you, I really like the way it moves too. And it kind of creates I like to think it kind of creates like an ice cave in the background that lets light in. So I, I really like that. Okay. Um, good morning, Karen from also sunny New Jersey. Good morning, Linda. Um, good morning, Vera Blue from Tennessee. Um, Linda says she likes the Santa hat on the baby. Oh yeah, you could just do it on one. You don't have to do it on both. And then it would kind of be neat on the front of the card. You don't have the Santa hat and then you just have it the one on the little, the baby polar bear on the inside. That's a good idea. There's different ways you could tweak the card, right? To, to make it work. Um, uh, Ellie says she loves the Santa hat to keep the Christmas spirit so cute. All right, well, I guess um, some people will love the Santa hat and some people will not want the Santa hat, but it's nice, you can do either or. And um, that's what's nice about making your own cards versus buying them in the store, that you really can make them your own. Good morning, Laura from Ohio. 
so glad that you're all here with me and I know some people don't like to comment on the lives and I just want to wish you hello too and I'm so glad that you're here with me and thank you for watching um, it really means a lot to me to have people join me on my live and um, when I log on and I see the numbers it just it makes me happy that you spent some time with me this morning all right guys I think I have talked about everything I need to talk about and I just wanted to let you know I will be back again next week Tuesdays I go live on my business page on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that's my casing Tuesday segment it's the makeover day when we do a makeover of a card and then I'll be back on my YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time next Friday and I hope you will join me then Oh, and Linda says, thank you so much for the tutorials. You make us happy. Aw, thank you. I'm so glad you love the tutorials. And look for that project sheet in your inbox tomorrow. And um, if, you, if you're so inclined, if you want to send me uh, a picture of the card that you made, I, I always would love to, to see that. Um, just uh, send me a message and I can send you my direct email address if you use the contacts form um, or if you're on my email list already if you just hit reply to my um, uh, my emails that I send out it will get back to me as well so if you want to connect with me you can do so in that way all right guys thank you so much for joining me this morning and I will see you again next week take care everyone bye bye